Hello there guys and welcome to another one of my reviews. As you might have noticed from the title of this video, today we are driving the brand new Bentley Flying Spur. The V8 version was launched not long ago and it comes as a mainstream choice for most customers as Bentley has told me. So we decided to take it out for a spin and see what it's like. But before we begin, don't forget to like, share and of course subscribe to the channel to keep these kind of videos coming. Now, in terms of design, you will notice that the Flying Spur is a bit of a peculiar bird in the range of Bentley these days. That's because if you split it down the middle, you'll notice that the front end looks more up to date and the rear end looks older. So up front, you'll notice that we have the same headlight design in you'll find on the Bentley Bentayga that I presented to you guys a while back. So inside the headlamps, you'll notice crystal details. They look absolutely marvelous. I wish I could capture them better on tape, but you know, I don't have the skills or the equipment to do that just yet. Uh, you'll also notice up front that we have black surrounds around the headlights. We have a black flying spur up on the front of the hood, a black blacked out grille which normally comes in chrome and we also have black details up front. Now this is a optional package, it's not standard and um, it will cost you a pretty penny. You'll also notice that the wings on the flying spur have crystals just like the headlamps and that lights up as well whenever you turn on the light. One last detail I want to show you up front is this carbon fiber splitter up front which is part of a package that brings carbon fiber to the rest of the car as well, including on the side seals. This package costs 10,000 euros and uh, I think it's worth the money because it makes the car feel and look a lot sporty. We have 21 inch wheels on this car, uh, but you can get up to 22s. And I should also point out that the door seal, the carbon fiber door seal, add-on has a Bentley logo as well. Moving to the back of the car, you'll notice the wide generous hips it has. It's absolutely brilliant and I love the way it looks from the back. Also, around the back, as I said, you'll notice that the Flying Spur feels like an older car. That's because the tail lights have an older design. You noticed on the new Continental GT and on the new Bentley Bentayga that they have oval taillights. On this car we have the old B-style taillights. They look good, but I am very curious to see how they would look with the oval taillights instead. And of course, since we have the carbon package on this car, we also have a carbon diffuser around the back and an automatically opening tailgate or boot uh, with plenty of space. I don't remember the exact figure right now, but you'll be able to fit plenty of stuff in here anyway. And since this is the V8, we also have a quad tailpipe exhaust setup. Inside, the Bentley Flying Spur is quite a sight to behold because everything is done according to the highest standards in crew. And the manufacturing quality and the material quality, the fit and finish, is up to Bentley's par. Now, you need to remember that Bentley and Rolls-Royce used to be the same car back in the day. They used to be assembled in the same factory up until Volkswagen and BMW got in between them. And the level of craftsmanship and the build quality is great. However, Rolls-Royce kind of wins in this regard because the main rival for this car should be the Ghost. Even though the Ghost is a bit more expensive, but in a Rolls-Royce you get better carpets um, and a better sound when you close the door. I know it sounds very frivolous, I know, but the sound the door makes when you close it is not up to par with what a Bentley should be. But other than that, those are like my only two gripes. And the Bentley does have an upper hand on the Rolls-Royce in certain areas. For example, the stocks. In the Rolls-Royce, they are made of some rather cheap plastic, but in here, they feel like metal. I think it's also plastic, but it feels a lot better and the design is a lot better as well. And then, we arrive at the center console where we have plenty of buttons, no touch, sur touch sensitive surfaces, which I absolutely love. And I love the way everything feels, even the climate control rotary button over here. It feels like you're opening and closing a vault. It's absolutely amazing. You're entering a safe combination whenever you're turning the temperature up or down. 
Then we have the clock over here, which is absolutely brilliant as well. And of course, the screen. Now, the screen does a little trick, and I sh I'm sure you've seen it before. When you press this button over here, it hides away as if it were shy. Now, the reason Bentley implemented this solution is because they considered that screens will age very fast. And they're right, just look at any Rolls Royce or Bentley from not longer than 10 years ago, and whenever you see a screen and the display technology behind it, you'll notice just how old the car has gotten because we're used to the latest screens these days in our hands and the latest technologies and the la latest um, animations. So. Bentley is offering you the possibility to hide it away so that the car looks more pristine and more up to date. And that's a good choice in my book. But this is an optional feature. It's 70, it's uh, 5,700 euros, and it will depend on your personal preference if you're gonna buy it or not. Other than that, as you would expect, there's plenty of room up in front. The seats are very comfortable. They are ventilated, they are heated. You have a massage function and they look and feel great to the touch. There's also something I want to mention, which is the door panel that has a 3D layout, a 3D um, fit and finish, sort of speak, that goes from up front and to the back and looks absolutely brilliant, continuing itself from the front door to the rear doors. Getting in the back of the flying spur, you will also notice that the front 3D panel on the door continues into the back. It's a premiere in the auto industry and it feels and looks really good. And you can get a plethora of combinations of leathers, of all sorts, of all sorts of colors. That's why I'm going to include a lot of shots uh, filmed by Bentley in this video to show you just what kind of combos you can get inside this car. Now, in terms of space, there's plenty of it. I mean, I can't really complain. I'm a pretty big guy, six feet tall, about 250 pounds. And the seat in front of me is adjusted to my comfortable position. And I also have room in the back. Now, nobody would expect you not to have room in the back of the Flying Spur. In terms of length, the car is 5.3 meters long, which makes it roughly in the, the same size as a 7 Series long, as an S-Class long, and cars of that kind of pedigree. Now, if you ask me, the closest rival this car has is the uh, Rolls-Royce uh, Ghost. Even though the Ghost is more expensive and a bit longer by about 20 centimeters, the two are very close. Uh, the Ghost is a bit more comfortable and better insulated, but I have a hunch that the Flying Spur is a sportier car. We're, we're gonna get into that a bit later on. But for now, let's talk about the amenities you find inside this car. For example, you have the buttons that adjust the seats right here on the door so you can easily reach them. The, this car is configured in a four seat configuration. You can get it as standard in a five seat configuration with a bench in the back, but I love these independent rear seats and they feel marvelous. And one, Standout feature are the headrests, which are simply amazing. I think I'm gonna throw away my pillows when I get back home. And the fit and finish is brilliant. We have uh, sun blinds everywhere in case you value your privacy and want to isolate everyone on the outside. There's almost no road noise coming in through the cabin. There's almost no wind noise coming in through the cabin and everything is as relaxed as you can possibly imagine. The one thing I also want to mention is this tablet over here. The first time I saw one of these was on the 7 Series. I saw that a lot of uh, manufacturers are adopting this, um, this feature right now. Basically, it allows you to adjust every single setting in the car by using this smartphone sized tablet. Uh, you can adjust the climate, media, lighting, the flying spur on the bonnet if you want to. You, you can hide it or uh, reveal it if you want to. You can adjust the blinds and so on. It's very practical. You don't have to reach for anything. You just pull it out, do your thing and just put it back on. And we also have a uh, folding table over here uh, with vin uh, wood veneer on it. Uh, it's also an optional feature and it's going to be pretty useful if you want to work on the on the road or if you want to eat something or something like that. Uh, and of course it is electrically adjustable because you don't have to do too much effort in a Bentley now, do you? 
That said, let's get behind the wheel and see how this car drives and whether it is worth the price tag. When you get behind the wheel of the Bentley Flying Sport, you notice a couple of things. This car is deceivingly quick and deceivingly capable, if I may say so. Now, as I mentioned before, quite a couple of times, this car is built on the same platform as the Porsche Panamera. So when you're driving it, it feels like an athlete has put on a lot of clothes to hide its true shape and to make him impervious to the outside. Um, this car is very well sound insulated, very comfortable and a lot heavier than a Panamera. But the chassis tells you it's a lot, it's very capable. Now, a couple of things play into that. First of all, the car comes with all-wheel drive. And this all-wheel drive system sends most of the power to the rear axle. The rear axle is active, which means it will steer along with the front axle. At low speeds, it will steer in mirror, the opposite way to improve the car's handling and agility, especially in narrow European old uh, cities. And at higher speeds, it will steer in the same direction as the front axle to improve the handling of the car. And it makes itself felt. This is a long car. It's a 5.3 meter long car and it doesn't feel that way. Furthermore, the car comes on uh, air suspension, but for better handling, Bentley has fitted it with active anti-roll bars um, working on a 48 volt electrical system, which means they react very fast to the car's shift in weight. So whenever you enter a turn with a lot more speed than you should, the car feels flat, feels very flat as a matter of fact. There's little to no body roll whatsoever. And that impressed the hell out of me because this car, unlike the Panamera, I expected the Panamera to be very stiff and to handle well. Unlike that car, this car tips the scales at 2.4 tons. Uh, and that is mightily impressive, if you ask me. So for this size and weight, it keeps its weight very well under control. And the V8 engine under hood is nothing to scoff at uh, uh, either. It's the same engine we had on the Bentayga. It's a 4-liter V8 used in a number of cars in the Volkswagen Audi group. Um, it develops 550 horsepower in this car and 770 newton meters of torque. Uh, it's hooked up to this 8-speed automatic double-clutch transmission that's also used on the Panamera. And these are basically the, the only two cars using this gearbox. You might be tempted to say that the 911 also has a dual clutch 8-speed transmission. It does, but it's a different one. It's not this, this uh, exact gearbox. So this gearbox reacts really well to your inputs. Whether you want to drive this car in comfort mode or in sport mode, it does its job brilliantly. In sport mode, the shifts are really fast. You can get the car in manual mode as well, and the shifts are even faster. The car actually reacts really well to your input. So, what are the benchmark speeds? Well, hitting 100 kilometers an hour from standstill will take only 4.1 seconds. Once again, amazing for a car of this size and weight. And its top speed is 314 kilometers an hour, which is amazing. The only other car of this size that goes faster is also the Flying Spur, but fitted with the 6-liter W12 engine, and that car will do 334 kilometers an hour. Just imagine doing that kind of speed in a car of this size. It's mind-boggling. And that's the main advantage the Flying Spur has over its main rival, uh, which in my book is the Rolls-Royce Ghost. The Ghost is set up to be comfortable more than anything else. It's not set up to be sporty, even though Rolls-Royce claims that the new generation is a lot sportier than before. That car has no focus on acceleration, no focus on sportiness whatsoever. Um, it also has all-wheel drive and it is a bit longer and heavier than this car, but it, it is far from it in terms of handling. And that's something you need to keep in mind if you're cross-shopping between these cars, but I don't think anyone is actually cross-shopping between them. They do appeal to different folks. Um, so. Yeah, the Bentley stays true to its heritage because Bentley is known as a company 
with a sporting pedigree, with a sporting DNA, if you will. Uh, it's a company that entered a lot of motorsport competitions over the year, and it had a lot more focus on the sportier side of things uh, than Rolls-Royce would, for example. Even though the two were the, basically the same company up until the late 1990s. And that can be felt through this car's uh, handling, uh, the way it behaves on the road, and um, so on. Bentley is actually still uh, racing in GT3 competitions as uh, as of right now with its um, racing car version of the Continental GT. That said, this has been my review of the Bentley Flying Spur. It is a brilliant piece of kit. Uh, for 250,000 euros, I don't think you can go wrong with it. Um, it is both comfortable and very fast and fun to drive if you want it to be. That said, I think you have all the info you need in case you were wondering uh, whether to get a Flying Spur or a Ghost. Uh, until I get to drive the Ghost, this car remains the best, the most comfortable and the sportiest um, sedan of this size I have ever driven. Until next time, don't forget to like, share and of course subscribe to keep this channel alive. And of course, don't forget to feed your passions. Ciao.